Today, me and Ara are going to Honjo Circuit. It's a local circuit, it's about 30 minutes away, and it's just across the border over into Saitama, which is directly south of Gunma. And today, I think there's a drifting event. A buddy of mine posted on, face posted on Facebook that he's gonna go to some drifting events, so uh, he invited me out too. I'm gonna go check it out. And today's goal is to fill most of the day with the A7S on the stabilizer. Get used to carrying it around. Uh, which car should we take today? Green or yellow? Decisions, decisions. Hmm. Um, let's take a green one. It's got AC. Got it. Alright, looks like it's pretty close. Yeah, about 20 minutes away. About eight and a half kilometers. Oh, hang on. Out. Drift hunter cards, I'm gonna give them out to people. 11 kilometers. So we're here. We're gonna go into Saitama. Hold on from all angles. So the guy with the CRX, so kind of rare. He's a young guy too, so he's probably an enthusiast. Yeah, this is this is wicked. All right, so we're parked here in the spectator parking lot. Even in the spectator parking lot, there's a bunch of sweet cars. And uh, grab a quick look from upstairs. A buddy of mine is here. Actually, uh, it's, it's my first time meeting him in real life. And um, it'd be nice to say hi. He's, he's with some friends, and he drives an S15, but it's not here today. But let's get some quick shots. One of the things I love the most is 
the uh, the sound, like the frequency of the screeching of the tires. You know, it's so different from when you hear it on camera. And the smell, the smell of clutches and burnt rubber. It, it's great, man. Hey, dude. Hey, nice to finally meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. Thanks for uh, the invite. Yeah, no problem. Oh, this is my girlfriend, Aiko. Hey, Aiko. nice to meet you. So, uh, Terrell's gonna show us his S15. <clears throat> he came all the way from Yokohama, which is how, how far is it? Uh, like two and a half hours. Okay, no, not super far. It's not that bad. Alright. It's, uh, it's yellow, right? It's silver. Silver? Okay. But I'm thinking about making it yellow. Right. Oh, which one is it? Is it? <laughs> this one. This one. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, Yokohama plates. Yeah. Nice. What do you like about the car? Uh, it's a lot smoother than driving an S13, and it has cup holders. You feel like you're living the dream? Yeah, it's weird. I haven't, like, I visited a ton of times before I actually moved here, like, a year and a half ago. Yeah. So, when I moved here, it was just kind of, like, life as normal, and it didn't really hit me until, like, months afterwards. It's like, oh yeah, like, everybody's like, man, I'm so jealous. It's like, oh, yeah, I guess it's pretty sweet. Nice. I love the interior at the S15. Yeah, it's really nice. I like it. I'm probably gonna yank out some of these gauges and or yank out some of these vents and throw gauges in them. Yeah. Let's get a turbo to it. Yeah. I'm still kind of on the fence if I should go 2J or RP, but I haven't decided yet. <laughs> so yeah, like, about about how much was it? So this one was about three grand US. Um, most this is a spec S, so it's NA, so there's no turbo. Yeah. But it has like all of like the side skirts and the wing and everything. But um, most turbo like spec R S15s go for like less than 10 grand, like maybe 8 to 10. Yep. So yeah, I got a really good deal in this car. I pretty much like I was scrolling around on Goonet and I originally found a different car at a dealer and I was thinking about that one and then I, this one popped up and I called the dealer in uh, Tsukuba and they were like, I was like, do you guys have it? And they were like, yeah, we still have it. So I, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to come pick it up right now and I oh hop on my the train. God. Do, do you have any advice for people who, uh, people watching it are like, I really want to come to Japan and get a drift car, start this life. Uh, save a lot of money because it's expensive. <laughs> uh, like just buying the car is good, but then like getting all the registration is like another grand, um, and then you'll get taxed like after a year, like maybe four or five hundred bucks to own the car. And yep. parking's expensive, so just it costs a little bit more to own and like maintain the car, I think, than than in maybe other parts of the world, but. Um, because of like the culture and stuff, it's totally worth it. Yeah, there's nothing quite like driving a drift car in Japan. Yeah, it, it's amazing. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Living the dream. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So I was asking Terrell about um, like just about tires and stuff. Yeah. Are, are tires one of your main expenses for for renting? Yeah, I guess tires and like. In the case of other guys, especially that drive street, like just replacement parts like arms, bars, stuff like that. Um, in my case, I don't really do a lot of street, but like tires is pretty much the main cost. Other than that, like as long as you just do proper maintenance on your car, generally things are okay. Um, but like if you're running a ton of boost and stuff like that, then there's other things you can worry about also. But, yeah. uh, how many events or how many days out do you get out of set tires? Uh, it depends on how much power you have. Like, if you have a low horsepower car like a Miata, a Roadster, or like an 8.6, <laughs> um, you're usually good on a pair on a set of tires, like for the day, um, depending on like what kind of track you're driving on. But in my case, um, I went through like a set and a half uh, the last time I did my track day at Tsukuba. So it kind of depends on, on your driving style and like what car you're driving. But generally, if you have at least like two sets of tires, you're pretty much good to go for the day. For the day, yeah. Do you, do you usually get new tires or you buy old tires? Uh, it depends. Like, if my friends have used tires laying around they don't need any more, then I'll, I'll steal them from them. But, um, 
Usually I try to buy new tires because it's just a lot better. You get more grip, you get longer life. Yeah. China tires or any particular brand? Uh, in the States, I ran Federals all the time. Um, and then on sometimes when I ran 15s and 16s, um, I put Pumos on there. But here, like, um, Nankangs are really cheap. Uh, and then there's another tire brand that I can't think of the name of right now that's also really cheap. But yeah, pretty much in general, like, Auto Box, Up Garage, Gago Auctions, like, those are pretty much the like normal places to get tires from if you want to get them too. Sweet. Awesome. Good info. Alright, we're just gonna do a walk around tour of the of the parking lot. Let's see. First we have these super sick go-karts or go-kart days. All right, so just doing a walkthrough, there's a ton of really cool cars like this Civic over here and this Itasha WRX, the Suzuki Swift. You don't see too many of those running uh, drift days and also an Altez over here. In the back you have a Sprinter Trueno, which is uh, the second generation one, which is not as famous as the, the Hachiroku AE86. Also coming up here you've got uh, super impressive WRX STI. This is one of my favorite cars and it's interesting to see it here because today is mostly a drift day but it looks like they might be running some grip as well. Got uh, an old BMW. That's kind of rare. You don't see too many German cars running the drift events as well. And uh, yeah, it looks like there might be definitely be some grip because there's an Integra over here and uh, uh, another late model Hachiroku and a, and a Porsche Boxster. But now we're starting to get to more of the drift cars. So you've got an S14 and a nice black S2000. Coming around, you have a lot of the sedans. And the sedans I'm actually not as familiar with but they're really, really popular with drifters. I think it's because they're very big, easy to easy to to escape the drift, and very maneuverable. And these Soros, the Toyota Soros, have been uh, have been warming up to them a lot lately. I, I really love the S15s the most though, and you've got you've got a Miata over here as well, another S15, another Porsche. You can see the S15s are definitely making up, at least the Sylvias are definitely uh, comprising most of the turnout today. We've got a 180 over here. And looks like you've got a Miata and another, I'm pretty sure that's, a, that's an S14. Nice color. I love the black and yellow. A 3 Series BMW over here. Another S15. Looks like it's taking some damage to the front. Another 180. Another NB Roadster. Some nice flare. Uh, some flares. Well, it's an older, it might be an older skyline. You can see everyone's just pushing it really hard around the corner. Really nice wide drifts. Yeah, oh, check this out, check this out. This is one of the coolest mods I've ever seen. Okay. So you're probably thinking, man, 
Man, that's pretty sweet. All right, seven. Mark, look again. It's an, it's an NB. Isn't that amazing? Wow, this is a really incredible mod. Look how seamless and clean the transition is from the rear, the rear tail light to the rear cord panel of the Miata. It really makes you think too. What happened? Did did the guy crash uh, his his NB and? an RX-7 and he had the parts for both of them to put them together, who knows, but it looks stock. Uh, it's starting to rain, I should probably put the uh, A7S and the camera and the uh, stabilizer away. Alright, so me and I are back in the car because it has started raining. That's unfortunately, the camera's not waterproof. So we might be teasing out pretty soon. And uh, Ara, why don't you give us your thoughts? Oh, about, about today's event? Yeah, about today's, today's event. Mm, I thought it was really interesting. Um, dangerous, but interesting. Uh, seeing different kinds of cars is cool. Um, what else? The engines were a masterpiece. Uh, the, those rims were sick. Uh, that's all the car terminology. <laughs> I got it right though, right? Those engines were a masterpiece and the rims were sick. Uh, yes, and the yeah. body kits were on point. <laughs> You're all over the place. Is that really? But I'm using the correct terminology, right? Uh, I don't know. Good enough. Body kits. Oh, body kits, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> What about like the smells and the sounds? It was loud. What was I smelling? Rubber? You were smelling burnt rubber. Oh. It was your first time actually seeing drifting, right? Yeah. First time like car thing, a car event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you surprised there were some girls there? Yeah. I like the female drivers. They look cool. I don't know. Yeah, us too actually. <laughs> I think Sorry. we're gonna head off too. Cool. Yeah, it was yeah. nice meeting you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, hit me up uh, if you're over in Dark Food next week. Okay, yeah, thanks so much for inviting me out randomly to this thing. Yeah, no problem. Great. So, I'll let you know next time I come up this way. Yeah, it, it's really, really nice to meet you too, brother. Yeah, yeah. same here. Cool, right. take it easy, man. See ya. So in drifting, why do you use older models or older cars? Well, there are a few newer cars. So the people who have money for to race newer cars will typically do that. But I think, in general, the, new, the cars of like the current ish generation so like you know, like brz's and 86's and 350's 370's those are pretty much it for cars that you can modify to drift at least the ones that you have here in japan there aren't that many and but there are a lot of the older cars like the old 240's the old 86's sylvia's um miata's you know, like these cars are still around and they're, they're low enough in price that people will buy them and, you know, drive them into the ground, basically. And another reason, I think, is just that people don't have as much disposable income as people back in, like, rich people back in Canada or the States, where you have, like, people just you know just rich and they throw a lot of money at their cars I think for the people who drift there's not that many people like that with like really ball of money to put into new cars to go drifting because when you when you start drifting especially at the beginning you're gonna crash a lot you're gonna go into the dirt you're gonna break stuff and so why do that in a new car you know keep your new car as your daily and then you've got a missile to run the track with basically that's what I think and that's what I've gathered you filming? 
seat because he's uh, packing his wheels into his car. He's now. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It's, um, yeah, it was just a random quick drifting day. It was really cool to introduce Ara to it. And yeah, in, in case I don't end up filming anything else for the rest of the day, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And Ara's got a YouTube channel too, right? Yes. With one video, which you guys <laughs> should check out because it's actually pretty decent. Should you introduce it? In the next video. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, her channel is Aras Day. A R A S D A Y. And yeah, basically, you guys should subscribe to her and encourage her to post more videos because, yeah, she's really entertaining. She <laughs> I'm, I'd like to say I'm cool, thank you. No. <laughs> cool and mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, thanks again so much for watching. Please drop a comment if you enjoyed this video and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. One more thing I want to ask you guys is to please check out my Instagram. I post a lot of stuff about daily life in Japan as well as some behind the scenes stuff. So I think you would enjoy that. So thanks again. I'll catch you guys in the next video.